Hey folks, thanks so much for having me here today. I'm very much looking forward to talking with you all about things that you can do in open source documentation. So um, I'm Erin McKean and I work on docs advocacy in Google's open source programs office. So my job, and it's a very fun one, is to help open source projects have better docs. Uh, if you haven't heard the term docs advocacy before, well, it's still pretty new. Basically, docs advocacy is all about bringing better documentation practices to the folks who often have the most power to make change, developers. So docs advocacy is the developer-focused practice of encouraging better software docs, whether that's through making docs yourself or helping others make docs or by creating a culture that places more importance on documentation. And we all know that docs are important, but sometimes people are surprised by just how important docs actually are to developers. So in fact, 72% of developers who were surveyed by Tidelift in 2019 cited established policies and documentation as a key decision factor that they used in choosing open source. And 93% of developers surveyed in 2017 by GitHub said that incomplete or outdated documentation was a pervasive problem in open source. Now I'm focused here on open source because that's what I work on, but I can't imagine that closed source, I can't imagine that closed source software has less of a need for good docs. And lack of documentation was the top reason that developers surveyed by DigitalOcean in 2018 gave for deciding against using an open source project. So survey after survey shows that developers care about docs and that they make choices based on documentation. So if your code is awesome, but you have no docs or incomplete docs or outdated docs, you're actually falling behind less technically adept or useful projects that have better docs. So when I tell people that I work on making open source docs better, they often tell me, great, we need better docs. So then I ask, okay, well, what are you doing to help your projects have better docs? In open source, docs have to be everyone's responsibility. And so in this talk, I wanna give you five ways that you can help make open source documentation better. And yes, definitely there's work ahead. And you might be thinking, well, I would have to be an amazing expert to really make a difference in open source documentation. But actually that's not true. In fact, even if you're a complete beginner, completely new to open source, there are lots of ways in which you could help make open source documentation better. And in fact, in some ways, being a beginner is an asset because it turns out that ignorance is um, a constantly sh shrinking resource. You will never know less than you know today. Now, this might sound like I'm joking, but one of the problems in writing documentation is that once you understand something, it can be really difficult to put yourself in the mindset of someone who's new to it. Beginner's mind is actually a precious resource. So one of the ways in which you can turn your current ignorance into actual knowledge and something of value is by creating friction logs. So friction logging is basically just doing stuff while paying attention. So find a project you'd like to try and follow the instructions, whether that's for a tutorial or a quick start, just find something that you can do. And then write everything down. Write down what you tried, write down what you expected, write down what worked and especially write down what didn't work and what you did to get past that little broken step and onto the next thing. Uh, I find that even writing down whatever search terms I use to try to diagnose the problem helps me a lot when I go back to my friction logs to figure out how the heck something worked. Then keep going. Keep going until you've either finished the tutorial or the quick start, or it's so broken that you just can't get any farther. And then share your friction log. You can raise an issue in the project repo and add a link to your friction log. Or if you can't find anybody to share it with in the project, a friction log makes a great blog post. Another thing that you can do to help uh, open source documentation is to go spelunking in the closed issues. A lot of times, 
there are uh, closed issues in a project where the answer was missing from the docs, but somebody shared it in the issue to help the person who was having the problem. And a lot of the time, that help never gets put back into the docs. So looking for closed issues, especially ones that mention docs, and finding the information that was missing from the docs and then putting it where it belongs in the docs can be a huge help. By matching the solutions and the issues to the gaps in the docs, you can help a lot of users. So how do you do this? How do you play match the issue to the docs? First, check out a project's closed issues. Then look for solutions in the closed issues that aren't reflected in the docs and write the solutions that are shown in the issues in a way that they fit into the docs and open a pull request. It's pretty straightforward. Another thing that you can use your uh, incredibly valuable, rapidly diminishing ignorance for is replicating bugs. Again, go back to the issues of a project, especially the ones that have been closed because the submitter hasn't responded, and then look for patterns. See if you can replicate the bug, and if you can, add your steps to the issue. So replicating bugs in issues might not actually seem like documentation work, but it's really important. A project with a lot of open issues can be seen by developers as having incomplete documentation or being not very well maintained. And by helping to replicate issues, uh, replicate bugs in issues that are just kind of lying around or stagnant, you can really help maintainers with their burden. And uh, by replicating issues, you give other people a step up to improve the documentation around those issues. Now, especially issues where the original person isn't responding, it's probably not because they fixed the problem. It's probably because they moved on to something else. And for every person who bothers to file an issue, there are a lot more who just went straight on to the find something else part. Now, once you've worked on friction logs for a little while and on adding documentation from issues and replicating bugs and issues, the next logical step is to start working on tutorials. Not all tutorials have to be fancy. Some of the most useful tutorials are the most basic. And tutorials really help you grow as a developer because you can never really know something until you've explained it to somebody else. So, to write a tutorial, I think the first place to start is to think about what did you get excited about lately? What were you happy that you learned? And then think about how would I explain this to somebody else? And if you've kept a friction log, this is great for writing tutorials because you could go back and look at every step that you did and everything that did and didn't work. Now, then think about, okay, well, you're excited about this thing and you know how to do it. But why would somebody else want to do it? What makes it cool? What problem will it solve? How will it help someone else to know how to do this thing? If, you're, if you need a little extra motivation, uh, find a friend. Each of you write a tutorial and then pair up and swap tutorials. Try to work through the other person's tutorial and make sure that it works. Also, having a friend to do this with uh, adds a little bit of accountability, just in the same way as having a friend uh, keep you uh, accountable for exercise does. Even if you never publish a tutorial, writing one is excellent practice. As time goes on, almost everyone ends up spending more time explaining things and less time being explained to. So having good, clear, concise explanation skills is really helpful. Now, if you can't think of something to do, copy. Now look around at projects that have good docs. Think about what makes those docs good. Then find a project that you like or that you want to use that could use some docs love. What could you copy over in terms of types or the structure of docs, not the actual content, obviously, from the project that has good docs to the project that needs a little bit of docs help? It is 100% okay to look at other projects' documentation as a model for your own docs. You can just treat them like a coloring book. The headings and the structure are the lines that you fill in with your own content crayons. So when you're trying to copy docs from one project to another project, first pick a project that you like. You won't be motivated to do docs for a project that you don't like. And then make a list of what kinds of, of documentation it has or it needs. Does it have a readme, but it needs a quick start? 
Does it have good concept documentation, but no tutorials? Does it need help with government stocks or documentation about participating in the community? Look for a list of document templates. Uh, the Good Docs Project and Write the Docs are great resources for this. Or choose a similar project with more comprehensive docs that you can use as a model. You can also use uh, doxy.dev, which is the documentation template for the Hugo static site generator. And then use the templates you've found to help create better docs for the project you've chosen. Now, I know I said that I was gonna give you five ways that you could help make better open source documentation, but I'm kind of going to give you a bonus round. So this is from a wonderful series of comics by Julia Evans, who goes by the name Bork with a zero on Twitter. I highly recommend her work. It's always entertaining and super explanatory. And so one way that you can add a lot of value to documentation in open source is by creating a concept doc. Have you ever found a library or a project and been like, I don't even know why I would use this. What is this even for? I don't understand what's going on here. That's a project that could really use a concept stock. Now, writing a concept stock does take more time and more work, which is why I kind of have it as a bonus round. But if you want to write a concept stock, here's how you do it. Find a project where it's unclear why you would want to use it. What does it do? Make a list of the concepts involved. Write a one sentence explanation of each concept. Now, this is a lot easier to say than it is to do, but give it your best shot. You just want to have something that's short and clear. Now, when you're writing one sentence explanations of some concepts, you might find that there are other concepts involved in those sentences that need more explanation. So go ahead and expand your list. Keep going until you run out of concepts. And then write a story, write a use case for the project. What would someone need to know in order to decide whether or not to use the project? Uh, and then include your explanations in there. So this is really hard to explain in the abstract. So I'm going to give you a concrete example. I'm working on a project to demonstrate documentation templates. The project is called Chronolog, and it helps time travelers convert between different calendars for more precise time travel. Yes, this is a joke project. It does not work. So a concept doc for Chronolog would involve explaining why would a time traveler want to use this? What is meant by the, by the phrase calendrical system? What a calendrical system conversion program does and so forth. And at the end of that concept doc, someone would be able to say, oh yeah, I time travel all the time. And boy, I would really like to be able to like convert between the Mayan and the Julian calendar more easily. Or they say, oh, you know what? I hardly ever time travel. I don't need this project. So I believe that everyone can contribute to open source docs if they are sufficiently motivated and they have some of these uh, places to start. Everyone is a beginner at something. If you've been holding back from contributing to open source documentation, there is no better time to start than today. And now there's one other thing that I wanted to mention. Some of the pushback I get from people about why they're not contributing to open source docs is they say, oh, I'm not a writer. Now, I totally understand it is scary to work on things and to do things that you feel like you might not be very good at. But almost everyone working in software development has spent more time writing non-code than they have spent writing code. They spent more time talking than they have writing code. And as long as you can reasonably express yourself, you can help with software documentation. In my non-Google time, I run a very large online dictionary and API called WordNIC. And I used to run, before I started working in tech, American dictionaries for Oxford University Press. And I also run a semicolon appreciation society. So if you want a semi-authority figure to tell you not to worry about your writing, or if you're writing in English and it's not your first language, I am here to say, in my professional language person opinion, you are going to be fine. Use templates. Look up words when you're unsure of their meaning. Ask your trusted friends to give what you've written a quick once over. And most of all, accept corrections gracefully and with appreciation. And most people reading your documentation will overlook a few misspellings or a typo or two or subjects that are disagreeing with their verbs. 
if you really want to increase the impact of your work, if you really want to increase your skills as a developer, creating better documentation is an incredibly effective way to do that. I think being able to create good documentation is a superpower. Um, please feel free to ask me questions in the live chat. I'm always happy to answer what I can and to try to find links to what I don't know. And speaking of links, I have some links for you. Uh, so first of all, there's a really good blog post uh, on friction logging that I recommend that you read. It's more from a product point of view, but it has uh, a lot of helpful tips for people who are friction logging in open source. Uh, again, I cannot recommend Wizard Docs by Julia Evans highly enough. The comics are great. Doxy.dev is the documentation focused template for the Hugo static site generator that I mentioned. It is set up from the perspective of someone who's trying to create docs for developers. The Good Docs project on GitHub is trying to make a uh, documentation templates for open source. It's still very early days as an open source project. So enthusiastic, enthusiastic participation is welcome. And uh, if you can't uh, think of your question right now for the live chat, you can always reach out to me on Twitter. I'm just E. McKean. I'm a pink robot on Twitter. So uh, if you don't see the pink robot, that's not me. And thank you so much for spending time with me today to learn about how you can help in open source documentation.